There's nothing in a child's life to prepare them for death. While children pass through the same stages of grief as adults, due to their limited life experiences, they will obviously grieve differently. It is important to remember that every person and every child grieves differently and at his or her own pace. Children experience loss and grief in many different circumstances. The sadness they feel due to the loss of a parent or other loved one may be experienced in many different ways over time. Swiss psychiatrist Elizabeth Kubler-Ross described grief as having five stages, moving from denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and finally to acceptance. In fact, while this is a useful framework for describing the components of grief, people do not move through the stages in a linear fashion. Recent research supports a more dynamic experience with movement in and out of these stages over time. When a child grieves the loss of a loved one, you might not even realize they're grieving. Kids process and display complex emotions differently than adults do. However, that doesn't mean the grieving isn't happening and that your child isn't affected by their emotions. What's more, children are never too young to grieve. Hi, I'm Kim Feeney with Butterfly Beginnings Counseling and welcome to my channel. I have over 10 years of experience helping children and families to lead healthier emotional lives and deal with big emotions so they can be happy together. I'd love to do this for your family as well. So please subscribe and hit the bell for weekly notifications on the latest content. Denial. This is the first stage of grief. Children want to continue to believe that everything is okay and that nothing bad has actually happened. If they were to take in all the emotion related to loss right away, it would be so overwhelming that they may deny the loss, thus giving their mind and body a little time to adjust to the way things are in life now without the deceased loved one. Denial is often characterized by such variant reactions as avoidance, confusion, shock, and even fear. It may seem counterintuitive, but denial is the stage that very often is necessary to survive the immediate impact of a loss. By thinking that life no longer makes sense or it's too overwhelming and the psyche is shutting down and retreating into an unreal world that protects the child from the frightening reality of the situation. A child may harbor false hope that none of this horror is true. Mommy or daddy will soon walk through the door and this terrible nightmare will abruptly end. Denial is crucial to help the child cope with and survive the grief event. Denial shields the child from becoming completely overwhelmed with grief and thereby prevents its full impact all at once. Anger. During this stage, a child may blame others for their difficulties. This particular stage can last for days, weeks, months, even years. It is when the earliest feelings are placed by frustration and anxiety. Kids may be angry, irritable, difficult to get along with. It is best for your child and others involved with your child to encourage expression and discussion of their angry feelings, not to bottle them up inside. Once the denial and the shock start to fade, the healing process then begins. At this point, those terrible feelings that the child was suppressing will rise to the surface. This next stage, again, involves frustration, irritation, anxiety. The reality begins to descend on the child and the questions may arise. Why me? And life is unfair and on and on and on. Because the child cannot comprehend that this could actually happen, they may direct blame and anger towards others in the family or even towards the divine. Researchers and other mental health professionals agree that although this anger is painful, it is essential for these feelings to be expressed. Anger is indeed a necessary stage of grief. Experts in the field believe that although it may seem that the child is in an endless cycle of anger, it will dissipate. It has been found that the more truly the child feels the anger, the more quickly it will dissolve and the faster the child will heal. Whereas in everyday day-to-day -day life, the child is instructed to control their anger, there is a different calculus regarding a grief event. Very often such a profound loss is accompanied by a sense of being disconnected from reality, that the child is no longer grounded in this world. The child's life is shattered and there's nothing substantial upon which to hold. Strangely enough, anger is something to grasp onto, a necessary step for this child in healing. 
Bargaining. A child may start to exhibit behaviors that seem very positive, including appealing to be very mature. Schoolwork may improve dramatically. The child may believe that everything is just fine and feeling this way might fix the situation. Bargaining is often accompanied by guilt. This is basically our way of negotiating with the hurt and the pain of the loss. After the anger begins to subside, very often you will find the child attempting to make a deal with the divine or a family member that's perceived to be very powerful in the family. Perhaps the child will say, I will never be bad again if you just bring my mom or dad back. This is called bargaining. And it is the way a child clings to a desperate yet false sense of hope. The child begins to feel that perhaps the pain and the grief somehow can be negotiated away. So desperate is the child to rid themselves of the pain, that they're willing to commit themselves to substantial changes in life, if that is what is required to bring back the loved one. The child is saying, I am willing to do anything it takes to return life back to normal. The depression phase may be delayed and often occurs when reality really sinks in for the child. During this stage of grief, Intense sadness, decreased sleep, reduced appetite, and loss of motivation are common. Once the child realizes that the negotiation isn't going anywhere and no one can make the deal to bring back their loved one, they often feel overwhelmed, helpless, and empty. These are the telltale signs of depression. Finally, the powerful realization that the person or the home that once was central to their life is really gone never to come back. When this does finally sink in, the child may seem to withdraw from life, walk around in a fog, feel completely numb, or even decline an invitation to get out of bed. Being part of the world is just too overwhelming. There's no interest in being around others, and there's a reluctance to even talk about things. This new reality just renders life utterly hopeless. Finally, children enter the stage of acceptance. Once they have processed their initial grief emotions, they're able to accept that the loss has occurred and cannot be undone, and are once again able to plan for the future and re-engage in day-to-day -day life and activities. While the final stage of grief is said to be acceptance, acceptance doesn't mean that it's okay that my parents are divorced or one of them died. Instead, it's the felt sense that I'm gonna be okay and be all right anyway. In this stage, the child re-enters reality their emotions begin to stabilize. The child can come to terms with the fact that life will never be the same and can be lived and thrive nonetheless. During this period, there's gonna be times of adjustment and readjustment. Some days are good and some are bad. And then the good days return again. Don't expect the child to never have another bad day filled with uncomfortable sadness. And eventually the good days will begin to outnumber the bad ones. The fog will leave an engagement with friends will begin again. Perhaps most importantly, the child will start to understand. Again, while the home will never be the same and the loved one can never be replaced, it is possible to live in a new reality. Reaching this stage of acceptance completes the metamorphosis. The child is now a different person than they were before. Their capacity to live and experience life is far beyond the child who suffered the traumatic loss and began this grieving process. It is important to recognize that children, like adults, again, may move between the different stages and at different rates and jump around from phase to phase. Recovery is more of a process than an actual event or timeline. When a child suffers the loss of a loved one, often their grieving can go unnoticed. And again, grief is not a linear experience, especially in children. Children display their emotions differently. Grief for kids is emotional, intellectual, social, physical. A child's level of understanding and reactive behaviors and needs will vary, all depending upon their age and level of understanding of the actual death event itself. Drop me a comment and let me know if you have ever gone through stages of grief in the past. Some adults wrongfully assume that young children do not comprehend death. While some young children may not understand the permanence of death, their level of understanding will grow as they age. For example, children five and younger may not clearly remember the person who has died, fully understand death, ideas about an afterlife, or temporary versus permanent absence. However, they will still experience grief, have needs, and express this grief through their behaviors. Again, grief in children is tricky because younger children don't understand the concept and its permanence. And a child may believe that death is temporary, 
because so many cartoons show a character being mortally wounded and then coming back to life. Consequently, younger kids often miss a loved one in small spurts and may be sad for a few minutes every now and again. And because they have trouble understanding that death is permanent, they won't fully grasp what the loss really meant to their life until they're older. Children begin to understand that death is permanent between ages six to nine, and then they develop fear, guilt, and blame. Between ages 10 to 12, some practical questions may be asked about death and how it will affect their family. Ages 13 to 18, children have a complete understanding of death and will begin to worry about themselves. They also question religion, philosophical beliefs, and doctors. Just like understanding of death varies by age, so do the signs of grief. It is important to recognize when your child is grieving so you can ensure they're dealing with their emotions in a healthy way. In fact, one study found that interventions can help a child cope with the loss in a healthy way and help prevent the development of mental health issues or traumatic grief. When an adult grieves, it seems to be ever present, even in moments of happiness. Children, however, often seem, children, however, often seem fine one moment to become very upset the next because their brains can't seem to cope with the sadness for long periods of time. They may continue to expect the person who has passed away to just show up at any moment. And again, this denial is normal for a while. And over time, the reality of the loss should begin to sink in, especially with older children. Whether your child has lost a pet, a teacher, a neighbor, or a family member, here are some other things you might see after the loss. Children may be extra clingy after a loss. They may cry about having to go to school, or they may ask for help for tasks that they've previously mastered just to get some t attention from adults. Infants and toddlers can sense the distress in their caregivers as well. So they might respond by being irritable, crying more, and wanting to be held, even if they aren't consciously aware of the loss. Toddlers and preschoolers may start wetting the bed or stop sleeping through the night. Meanwhile, a small child may revert to crawling, baby talk, or even wanting to go back to drinking out of a bottle. Older children and teenagers who have experienced loss often show grief by falling behind in their studies or even failing classes they once aced. They may also have trouble concentrating on tasks and fail assignments. Grief-stricken children might want to sleep with parents or others close to them. They could even develop nightmares or dreams about the person who has died. Meanwhile, older children may have a bit of insomnia or may be afraid of death, which can keep them from sleeping altogether. Sometimes children might not be able to focus on any particular activity or have trouble making decisions or solving problems. They also struggle to focus and may appear distracted or just lost in space. Both children and teens may develop anxiety and start to worry about everything, but in particularly about other people in their life dying. They will need reassurance that they will be safe and looked after on a daily basis. This need is particularly evident among preschoolers. Children might feel betrayed, rejected, or abandoned by the person who died and perhaps by others as well. Consequently, again, they may need to be reassured that you will be there for them no matter what. During this time period, make sure you keep your promises so that these fears and abandonment will not persist. Children of all ages may react to grief by displaying behavioral problems that may not have existed before. They may begin acting out in school, talking back at home. Teenagers may be drawn to riskier behaviors such as drugs and alcohol. It's common for kids to blame themselves for a loved one's death. Children might think it's their fault because they once wished the person would go away or because they might somehow think their actions caused the person's death. Young children may start talking about death in their pretend play more. Their stuffed animals, dolls, or action figures may die and then come back to life. If you witness this behavior, recognize it that your child is grieving that loss. As all children are affected by death, it can alter their behavior. Often negative words and actions are misdirected, which is how child grief can go unnoticed. At any age, aggression can occur. However, as children get older, acting out becomes common while grieving, whether in school, at home, or with friends. It's crucial to identify out of character behavior, address why it's happening, present alternative methods to cope. Grief is not limited to bad or discouraged behavior. Grief behavior also includes becoming the golden child too, 
As a child caregiver or supportive adult relationship, it's vital to encourage healthy coping methods for children of any age. And the following are always beneficial. Honesty when answering questions about death. Proactive ways to express feelings, whether it be grief group programs, art, writing, pretend play, and then of course, continued emotional support and encouragement. While it's not easy for an adult to deal with their own grief and navigate helping a child through their own, it's important to help kids learn how to cope. Start by being honest. Using euphemisms such as we lost him or they're sleeping now can confuse and scare a little child. It's important for children to understand that the person isn't just sleeping or lost, but rather their body stopped working and they're not coming back. Of course, the gruesome details of a person's death are definitely not necessary. And you should make a point to tell the truth whenever possible. You wanna make sure you acknowledge the loss. It's up to you if you decide if it's appropriate for the child to attend the funeral or not. And if your child is scared to go, don't force them to do so. You can find other ways to acknowledge your child's loss. Write a letter to the loved one, hold a private celebration of life, light a candle, or just create a scrapbook of, of pictures of the loved one. Keep in mind to be patient. A child's grief cycles, again, they go in and out. And to an adult, it can feel like they're dwelling on the loss. Even after you've thought they've moved on and accepted it, it's crucial to be patient and respond similarly with comfort and the truth every time they return to a moment of grief. Remember that a reminder such as an anniversary of the death can reawaken and restart that grieving process all over again. Teachers, particularly, should be in the loop as to what's going on with the child and the family. They need to know information about the death, whom to turn to if they're seeking signs of distress, and an appropriate way to support the child if they're having an emotional moment. Your child will look to you to see how to deal with their feelings, so it's important to make sure that you're taking care of yourself. Talk about your own feelings openly. Be careful not to burden your child with too many adult issues. And it may be helpful for you to speak with a grief counselor or to attend a grief support group to help you care for your emotions. If you're looking for a place where you can share stories with like-minded people, consider joining our Facebook group for calm, empathetic, supportive parents and caregivers using the link below in the description. Your child may benefit from reading stories about loss, death, and grief. Be prepared to answer questions about what happens to people when they die. And if you don't know the answer, it's okay to say you aren't sure. There are some links to some recommended books down in the description. You may not see many signs of grief immediately in children following a loss, especially if a child is young. And that doesn't mean you won't see signs of grief years later. Four-year-olds who lose their father won't understand the finality of the death at the time. And when they're 10 and there's a father-daughter dance or a father-son fishing trip, they might begin to show signs of grief as the reality of what they lost really sinks in. Similarly, seven-year-olds might seem to resolve their grief rather quickly after they lose a grandparent. And during their teenage years, they may show signs of grief as they begin to understand the things they missed out on by not having their grandparent in their life or they may regret not spending the time they had with them when they were alive. There's no timeline when it comes to grief, no matter how young or old a person is. As a result, it's not productive to suggest that it's time for a child to get over it. The grief may last a lifetime, and with support, grief can turn into healing for the whole family. Parents can help their children by grieving with them, listening, offering love and reassurance, helping memorialize the deceased, encouraging questions, and seeking professional help if needed. Don't forget to join our Facebook group for calm, empathetic, supportive parents and caregivers. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and share with a friend. Until next time, wherever you are on your day, hug your child and make it a great one.